Welcome to our presentation and thank you for inviting us for this talk at ESIL conference. My name is Nicole Krüger and I'm from the University Library at ZHAW. This is Zurich University of Applied Sciences in Switzerland. We will start with definitions of games and serious games and then head over to my colleagues from Bulgaria with details on the Navigate project. And towards the end, we will discuss the concepts of gamefulness and playfulness in serious games. In his classic work, Homo Ludens, John Husinger, he defines six characteristics of games. This is play is free action. It is voluntary and can be stopped at any time. Play stands outside the process of fulfilling a need or desire. A game has boundaries and limits in time and space. A game can be repeated. It has suspense and release, so it captures your mind. And a game has rules that cannot be logically discussed or there's no skepticism possible. Now, when it comes to serious games, it is unclear if they can meet these characteristics of Husinger. Michael and Chen, they define serious games as games that do not have entertainment, enjoyment, or fun as their primary purpose. But then if enjoyment and fun is not the primary purpose, why do we play? If not for the fulfillment of needs or desires. And this is in order to learn something in this case. So here there is a contradiction to the definition of Husinger. Jawiti, Alvarez and Jesso, they define serious games as mergers. They call them any piece of software that merges a non-entertaining purpose with video game structures. So here we talk about mergers and not about pure games. But from our um, understanding, serious games can also take place in an offline setting. So our own definition of serious games is that they are resources and materials that merge a non-entertaining purpose with elements of entertainment, enjoyment, or fun. Okay, I head over and over to you, Pamela. Thank you, Nico. I'm from, uh, my name is Plamena Zlatkova and I'm from University of Library Studies uh, in Bulgaria and part of the Navigate team project. Uh, in the current research, we step on the findings of uh, Navigate Information Literacy, a game-based learning approach for avoiding fake content, a project funded by, uh, by the Erasmus Plus program under activity, uh, key activity tool. Navigate uh, aims at enhancing students' learning using serious game, uh, games that can support the improvement in of uh, information literacy competencies. The project uh, is focused on higher education students in humanities and social sciences as major target. In the framework uh, of Navigate, 70 games used for teaching information literacy in academic libraries and programs were uh, identified and evaluated. The final result uh, of the project was the development of uh, two original serious games in the field of information literacy, a topic included in a complex of many disciplines in the university curricula of humanities students in Bulgaria, Italy, and Sweden. For example, in library, uh, libraries, it's common to understand the concept of information literacy as uh, including skills for working with a catalog, using the capabilities of the catalogs, uh, which can be related to the skills for selection and analysis, filtering of the sources. However, the broad understanding of the term also includes the evaluation of information, reliable or not, of good or poor quality, etc. It synthesizes the creation of new original content, the application of ethical standards for, use, uh, for the use of information, etc. Next slide, Nicole, please. Thank you. 
as the phase preceding the development of our own conceptual and real model for information literacy games, uh, we conducted a study aimed at determine, uh, determining the key to the success of the serious games. What uh, do the successful games offer according to the opinions of the experts and what must be taken into account in the design of game-based uh, learning? To achieve this goal, we started to look for, uh, for information literacy games that are applied in universities and or libraries around the world without striving uh, to be completely exhaustive. First, we complied a list that originally included 70 games. And as a next step, we formed a team of experts in e-learning and game-based learning, information literacy experts and librarians and share with them the table with the selected information literacy series games. The playfulness, gamefulness of the games had be evaluated according to the following criteria. Playability, lastability, engagement, user interface, and storytelling. These criteria can be defined as very important in terms of the quality of the games. A scale from 1 to 10 points was used in the evaluation process. Next slide. Thanks. The final list containing the 20 best games in information literacy served as a basis for the development of uh, an interactive database in the framework of Navigate Project, Navigate Searcher. In the Navigate Searcher, games are presented through summary cards showing the, uh, what their purposes are. The filters on the left side of the page are particularly important as they help user, uh, users to select games based both on educational purposes and on different features related to their playfulness. When the user finds a game that meets their needs, the detailed information about uh, the ga game can be accessed by clicking more. Scrolling down, the librarian or educator finds the results of the peer review. The results of the peer review focusing on the different aspects of playfulness. This data could help him or her to have a better understanding for some features of the game. For example, how long does it uh, take uh, to play this game? Uh, is it articulated with the learning goals, etc.? The peer review doesn't stop here. If a librarian or a teacher chooses one of these games, they can come back to the Navigame Searcher to report their, uh, their experience of the application of the game in an educational setting. The feature is uh, especially useful to new librarians and teachers that will test the interactive tool. Next slide. Thanks. The evaluation of information literacy games by the expert team with regard to criteria as playability, lastability, engagement, user interface, and storytelling. The figure shows that the information literacy games created so far as a total score of all five criteria range between a score of three to 7.5 points. In in other words, it's difficult to meet a satisfactory level the, uh, the user's requirements for all of them. Two of the evaluation criteria adopted by the Navigate, lastability and storytelling, are most often evaluated, uh, evaluated unsatisfactory or average. For example, one of the highest rated game is Play Archivist. It was developed by Promemoria Group and is re relatively new from uh, 2018. However, uh, it's uh, low rated by the last ability uh, criteria. The opinions of the specialists stand out. The game is either perceived as endless or ends up in uh, such a short time 
that it's tasteless or useless. According to another opinion, the game is engaging but too long or end up too quickly. As for storytelling, although uh, it receives a high rating, there, uh, there are opinions that say that is necessary to think about uh, this element of the design. The game storytelling side is totally weak and uh, the metaphor used is weak, useless and not clear. Now I'll give the floor to my colleague Marina Encheva, uh, who will tell you more about uh, the two original information literacy games developed by the Navigate project. Thanks. Everybody. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm very glad uh, to be here. My name is Marina Encheva. Uh, I am teaching at the University of Library Studies and Information Technologies in Sofia, Bulgaria, and I had the pleasure to coordinate uh, the Navigate project uh, in the last three years. Concerning our games, the first one, Information Trap Manager. It is uh, an adventure and strategy game simulating a university campus. It has interface in Bulgarian, English, Swedish and Italian and provides middle and advanced information literacy uh, competencies for an undergraduate student. Learning in the game is attained through students' dormitory, students' uh, cafe, students' club, library, examination center, classrooms and knowledge center. Players uh, have to roll the dice and keep moving around the campus board in order to explore the eight learning outcomes and to face series of challenges related to information literacy. The second game, The Navigator, is a storytelling based mini game simulating the social texting apps with interface in four languages. It aims to raise the awareness of higher education students in humanities about the risks related to the quality of information sources. The crap test model is embedded uh, in the game. Uh, the game starts with the breaking news followed by a chat-based dialogue with an artificial intelligence robot assistant. Next slide, please. Thanks, Nicole. Both games were presented to humanities students, teachers and librarians from the partner universities in Bulgaria, Italy and Sweden and were tested by them. Their opinions are not rated on a scale, but are summarized as positive and negative. The following criteria have been taken into consideration in the evaluation process. Playability, lastability, engagement level, user interface, storytelling. Now I will pay a special attention to the playability and engagement. Next slide, please. With regard to the playability, so I'm sorry, uh, we must return to the previous one, sorry. With regard to the playability of the Information Trap Manager game, students express the following positive opinions. Playability is good and we enjoy playing this game. It's easy and useful to play. Among the negative opinions were, it should be more emotional and more immersive. The game is difficult for an average student and user. Concerning the playability of the Navigator games, the student said that it's rapid and interactive and uh, it's very easy to play, but they were disappointed by the fact that the documents included in the game were just uh, images and uh, they didn't really work. The following positive opinions were expressed by the learners about the engagement level of information trap manager and navigator games. The different encounters with various characters made the game exciting. It's interactive, fun and entertaining. The engagement um, uh, interactions in the first game uh, and um, um, was uh, disappointing. Um, and uh, the second game could be more engaging and uh, challenging. Next slide, please. The teachers who participating in the testing were more concise in their assessment, but also uh, shared with us valuable opinions about the both games. Concerning information trap manager game, the teacher said the following, 
no obstacles to overcome. It all comes down too simply to a series of questions. Questions are too difficult. It's not so clear how does the game end. The game has an unnecessary crowded interface and a lot of graphics with background function only. Almost no replayability. The choice of the setting could be engaging, but it doesn't have uh, to mark the actual didactic task of the game, etc. With regard to the second game, the navigator, the following opinions were shared with us. The story is engaging, but the game is too linear. There are no possible alternatives. Sometimes the right question is the first one, which is not good for teaching. There is no any replayability. Due to the linearity of the game, the way in which we can suggest the correct answer makes the overall experience more similar to reading an article. Easy, light, and pleasant to play. The idea of fake land is fresh and creative. It's nice and joyful. Main character is also fine. The game is interesting and helpful, etc. Now I will give the floor to my colleague, Nicole Kruger, who will make a conclusion and will outline our hypotheses and future research plans. Thank you, Marina. So while the Navigate project was running, we came across concepts that are very interesting for further project phases. Serious games after our definition are mergers, as we mentioned, of a non-entertaining purpose, the learning outcome, and elements of entertainment, enjoyment, or fun. So the question is how we could enhance the entertainment and fun aspect and motivate students to play, but without neglecting, on the other hand, the good results and the learning outcome. And already Husinger mentions the difference between paedia, which are children's games on the one hand, and agon, which are games for competition in sports, in the Olympic games, etc. And in ancient Greek, there are different terms for these two kinds of games. Calois, he takes up this difference and makes an even more detailed classification of different kinds of games. And for each type of game, which he characterizes, he assumes that there is a scale from childlike paedia on the one hand, and the rule bound, what he calls ludus, at the other end. And Stepping on this, in 2010, Lucero and Asa Arasvuri, sorry, Arasvuri from the Nokia Research Center, they developed the Plex framework. And this is the playful experience framework. It comprises 22 Plex cards with playful experiences. And these Plex cards are used to support the development of applications and the environment of mobile phones. So here we have really um, some experiences which we maybe didn't even connect to gamification before, like cruelty, humor, like jokes and laughing, but also sensation, subversion, breaking rules and norms, fellowship or friendship. These experiences are taken into consideration um, in the user experience design. Um, as Lucero and Arasvuri um, mentioned in their research. But the question is, if we can consider and if we should consider these plex experiences also in the development of serious games. So in our hypothesis, serious games until now are rather gameful than playful. They are always headed towards an end, towards, for example, gaining badges, being on top of a scoreboard, or um, aiming at an end of the game. Play, on the other hand, means to lose yourself in the situation. You don't want a game, a playful game to end. It is full of suspense and release and it captures your senses. So 
is there a chance or any possibility that we can integrate more playful elements into serious games? And these elements are described as tumultuous, causing immoderate laughter, making you lose yourself in the game. Um, would this be at all successful for serious games? And in the context of gamification, where we have the aim of getting our content to the learner to make the students learn something on information literacy. So these are still open questions, which we might deal with in further project phases of Navigate or in our research um, at the universities. And here we come to an end of our talk. We hope that it was inspiring and now we're here for questions at Esil and thank you for your comments.